Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist. Today we are checking out yet another new artist. This is Katrina Villard or Velarde and Jessica Villarubin or Villarubin. You can correct my pronunciation in the comments below. I do not know these artists at all, so this will be a first time listen, first time reaction and an analysis, meaning that I will be pausing to talk uh, primarily about their vocal technique, as that's where my expertise lies. I'll also be commenting on other musical or artistic choices um, with the ultimate goal for these videos and for this channel of bringing you guys more musical value, more value, more enjoyment, uh, really to enhance and augment your musical experience entirely so that you can better appreciate these amazing artists that I'm that I'm making videos for and you can take that understanding and apply it to your musical listening elsewhere. That really is my goal primarily to educate and secondarily to entertain. Uh, guys, please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the algorithm. It could be as simple as saying, hi, Peter, or I love Katrina Villard or I love the song, does not matter, all good for the algorithm. And like I said a minute ago, if I am bringing value to your listening experience, please do consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. It is the best possible way to support me as a creator, an artist, an educator, and to allow me to continue doing this as a secondary career in addition to my career as an opera singer. And without further ado, guys, let's jump in. Let's break this down. Let's analyze what's going on in these two singers' voices. And let's have some fun all the while, shall we? Let's do it. All right, let's back it up and get the intro there first. Also, maybe we won't be having quite as much fun given the the, <laughs> the mood of the song, but we can certainly do a lot of analysis and enjoyment here. Um, mm -hmm, see what key we're in? A flat minor here, I believe, to start. Okay, so kind of the five, four, three, four, five in A flat minor. Just a little riff on mm, um, just adds a little bit to this otherwise purely instrumental introduction. You know, it also probably adds to the music video a little bit to have uh, her singing at the start. Now, I don't actually know. I assume this is Katrina starting because she's her name is first on the bill. But you guys can again. I don't know these singers. This is my first experience. Um, but again, adding a little bit of that singing during an, an instrumental introduction can add a little bit of um, just interest and, and, and keep... I swear this happens every time I'm recording. You guys hearing this? All right, Mason, another edit. Another edit coming up. Oh, it's like some absurdly loud city noise happening when I'm recording these. Anyway, the little riff, the little singing on the mm during an otherwise purely instrumental introduction can add a little bit of interest and intrigue to the introduction here to keep us keep us engaged. Often you guys probably know a lot of people click off videos in the first few seconds. So anything to kind of, you know, keep the audience engaged is always is always good for uh, re retention rates in YouTube YouTube videos. <laughs> This fire is burning still. All right, so she's approaching, you know, very, very intimate, soft singing to begin. That first pitch mm, is for, for an A flat. There's so much life, which is, that's getting down pretty, pretty low um, for what I can tell this voice type is, a, a female singer otherwise. Mm, there's so much life. There's so one octave higher than my bass demonstration, of course, and just keeping the keeping the singing very uh, breathy and intimate. There's not a whole lot of vocal full closure, um, meaning that simply meaning that more air is escaping through the vocal folds. 
with a higher vocal fold closure, it's a more efficient, powerful tone. But you know, especially right at the start of a piece, it, it makes much more sense to opt for a breathier, more intimate sound so that it gives you a place to develop and go as the song goes on. And you, you know, you want to uh, kind of uh, structure your performance towards the climax of the piece, which gets a little bit undercut if you come out of the gate belting at full volume. So that's where we're started here vocally. There's so much life. 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 And she she allows that slide to fall off just as a kind of artistic choice. Otherwise, it would have just been a straight pitch, but she allows the pitch to fall off, you know, for the expression she's trying to convey. There's so much life I've left to live, and this fire is burning still. And I like how on, on these, when she gets to a sustained pitch, she allows nice vibrato to come in. Uh, let me get the words here. Live, and this fire is burning still. And this fire is burning still. Instead of fire is burning still. Fire is burning still. She allows some nice natural vibrato to come in there. When I watch you look at me, I think I could find the way. So keeping it in a very similar place, opting for a little bit of vocal fry on occasion at the start of the phrases. I think I, I think I think like at the start of that phrase. When I watch you look at me, I think I could find the way. Every dream and forsake the solid ground. So we've got a little more instrumentation, instrumentation added for this second verse here. To stand for every dream. Few stringed instruments. And forsake the solid ground and give up this fear within of what would happen if they ever knew. Vocally remaining very similar to the first verse, opting for still this more breathy, intimate approach. Um, I'm, I'm pretty certain this will rev up slightly whenever we get to the first chorus, likely about to happen as soon as I click play, right? Um, but again, a very similar approach vocally to the first verse, keeping it intimate, keeping the low vocal full closure. We've got no high notes, we've got no belting yet. Um, we've got no, you know, no power vocals happening yet. Um, and again, still, you know, we're a minute into the song with still plenty of real estate to explore as far as, you know, vocal range and vocal power. I'm in love with you Cause I surrender everything To feel the chance to leave again I reach to this song what is this from is this greatest showman i can't remember it sounds very familiar though it feels like greatest showman uh but i i don't know for sure i only saw that movie once i loved it actually love the music from it um leave a comment below i don't remember what this is from but i definitely recognize it and yes so now uh katrina i'm gonna assume it's katrina um is now opting for you know, more vocal fold closure, more power in the sound, and getting up into her high natural chest range. Uh, I don't think there's been anything really in, a, in, in kind of a head voice yet. I think we're still very much in pure chest belt land, um, which is why you get a, a much more powerful sound, you get a more efficient sound, especially as she ascends in her range, the vocal folds stretch, and less air, with a trained singer, less air will come through. Uh, sometimes a, a, like a super untrained singer, if they try to sing high, the sound will be very breathy because their vocal folds don't have the coordination yet, essentially. But uh, with a singer like this, uh, no issues there. So pretty much guaranteed as she ascends in her, in her chest belt range, the, the vocal fold efficiency will get higher. I'm in love with you. Too, I know you can feel it too, but make it through. 
So you can feel just, I mean, throughout that whole section, she has a nice vocal fold closure, good vocal fold efficiency, but you can feel it just ever so slightly ratcheting up as she ascends in range, which is what you'd expect. Um, let's, let's see what kind of range we're actually op dealing with here. Mm, so I think we're starting at an E flat four. B4, B4, just touches on a C sharp 5, so just above tenor high C. So you could feel from E4 to C sharp 5 as she ascends, the vocal fold efficiency gets higher, the sound gets more efficient, and in all likelihood the sound gets more powerful. Although in a studio setting when everything is compressed. Um, it's the kind of thing you can really only tell, not just in a live performance, but really a live performance in person, because pretty much every recording device is gonna have some kind of compression response on it, especially uh, you know the lower quality recording, like an iPhone or something. You can sing a low note, it just sounds the same volume as a huge high note, because of that's just how it's the audio engineering works for those devices. Um, so tough to tell power. I would assume as, as she ascends, it is also a more powerful sound, but because of the audio engineering side, we don't get to clearly judge that. There's a nice high, high belt, C-sharp five. She sustains it this time. So the first in the first iteration of that chorus, she just touched it, just barely touched on it for a second, still remaining very pure chest voice. Um, and But this time she actually sustains a belt on that C-sharp five. Twice, two high C-sharps. Oh, there, there's a head voice. Just, just, just to kind of wrap this chorus up, she brings it back to a more intimate place. I that B4, so she just sang these pitches in pure chest voice. Now she's opting for that lighter mechanism to bring the chorus home. So now we got we got drums coming in. Uh, let's assume this is Jessica again. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that would make sense how it's titled. Uh, so now we got drums. Drums always add so much to a piece. It just gives it much more drive and kind of forward motion. Um, as far as vocal approach, it's a similar approach to where Katrina started. It's it, it is in a, it's in an intimate place. It's not a big powerful sound. Um, not yet anyway. It's not in a high. It's not in a high part of her range. Um, but there is a higher intensity than where we started. And like part of that is like if you go verse one, verse two, after the first chorus, when you come back to that same, you know, chordal harmonic structure, you know, uh, sort of strophic, like the delivery of the text and everything is similar. You do want to add intensity to kind of keep, it's like you have, you know, peaks and valleys, but you want the second valley and third valley to be higher than the first one. So the whole progression of the song, while it goes like this, does have an upward trend. It's like the line of best fit for anyone who remembers freaking what is it, middle school geometry. <laughs> um, so the line of best fit, we want going like this until the very end, and then you want to wrap it up. But a similar vocal approach to how Katrina started. A little riff as well to start. So they both did a little riff during the interludes. Again, uh, opting for straight tone aside from those sustained pitches. Away from you. Then allowing the vibrato to come through on the sustained notes. You're the reason I go on. And I need to live the truth. Right on a 
to flag that that riff actually. I like that riff. So a lot of a lot of riffing. Again, I don't <clears throat> I don't know if this is original or if it's from Greatest Showman or something else. But I do love a tasteful riff, no matter where it is. A tasteful riff is a uh, so riffing is when the voice it sounds like it's moving around on specific pitches. That's called a riff or a run, or it's called coloratura in um, the opera world, classical world. And I love a tasteful riff. And what I call a tasteful riff is a riff that a is performed well and accurately and isn't done in a show offy way, but just does something to add to the mo the emotion or the message and overall to the communication uh, that the singer is trying to get across. Tasteful riff. So, so a riff done tastefully, I mean, is another way to think about it. You're the reason I go on. The reason I go on, on. Just like that. It's not much, but it just adds a little bit of a little bit of interest and intrigue. You're the reason I go on, and now I need to live the truth. Right now, right now, there's no better time. Something like that. Alright, big belt. Okay, up to E flat five. So now that we're getting up into, you know, even for even for well trained singers, E flat five sustained belt. Yeah, we're not playing around. That's getting that's getting real high. And also, this transition she makes into the chorus is really cool. And so it, it's funny, it's um, <clears throat> something a little counterintuitive, which I've mentioned multiple times before on the channel. When you hear a big belt sustained a long time, it seems counterintuitive because it sounds like that singer would need to be using more air to, to sustain a big, powerful note for a longer period of time. But it's actually quite the contrary. You actually are much more efficient with the air use during a big power belt like that. It means barely any air is actually escaping through the vocal folds. It's a very efficient sound. It produces a lot of high harmonics. It's a powerful sound. It's actually what, in opera, we, we aim for throughout our, our entire vocal range. In non-operatic non genres, it's usually just the top where you get the high vocal fold closure. In opera, we aim for it throughout. And it's to have that cut and bite in the sound um, no matter what. And so what it means is that a bigger, powerful sound, if you know, if, assuming the air is being used efficiently, you can actually sustain that for much longer in one breath than you can a soft, breathy sound, just by way of how the how the how much air is escaping, you know, per second or whatever. So she has this massive bell, and it's like, how could she hold it that long? It's because there's not much air coming through her vocal folds. It's an, it's an efficient use of sound. <clears throat> it's to the point where. It's not quite as, as long as this, but a really efficient use of air, you can, you can sustain a, a, a sung pitch almost as long as you can hold your breath. This is such a powerful chord progression. Truly, that's another thing about this song. Um, powerful stuff. Powerful singing. Powerful chord progression and musicality. We got powerful drums. Powerful belting. It's great. It's a really. I'm really enjoying this. All right. 
<laughs> yes, vocal fireworks. We love it. And I like that harmony where it started. So up to a high A flat five. And <clears throat> you can tell just by there's a change in what I would call the body of the sound. There's not as much body in the sound, which means Jessica's very likely opting towards a more mixed voice position, more headiness in the sound than a pure chest belt. Um, a pure chest belt up to A flat five. Only, I mean, very few people on earth can do it. So young might be one of the only people I've ever heard actually do it, a pure chest belt that high. And it's very much like a, a yell. I mean, it is like you are stretching your, the whole mass of the vocal folds as far as they can possibly go, where it's like, it, it sounds very much like a, like a very intense yell, but it's being controlled. This sounds, um, I mean, it's still crazy impressive and she's maintaining a ton of control, but this sounds like it's more of a mixed voice position just because you lose some of that like thickness, you lose some of like the bottom of the sound. Mm, I love the the the, uh, the grit in the sound just at the start of that. So I think she, I think Katrina's got up to an E flat five as well. She also got up to an E flat five, so we're, we are way up there in bell land. And just putting a little bit of turbulence into the vocal folds for that grit right at the start of that word, fire. Key change. Now, okay, half step up, now sustaining belt for Katrina on a high E, above tenor high C, super, super high, still very connected to pure chest voice. You can feel that yelly quality in it. It really, it's controlled, yeah, like mechanistically, it is a controlled, breath-supported yell. That's what's happening. Up to a high F. And this is when, if the singers are really good at mixed voice, when you factor in compression and <clears throat> post-production and the audio engineering side, if they have a really good mix, it's really tough to tell where the kind of pure chest ends and the mixed voice kind of starts. To me, it sounds like they're E flats for sure, pure chest, E's likely, F's, then it gets like, it gets really hard to tell because that would be the, that would be the, kind of a transition point where they would want to opt to start mixing. Uh, but it gets very difficult to tell in this kind of setting. Sick. Ooh, and a nice riff. Like all, uh, mm. Someone like that? Katrina, I think. Oh, all the way up, down, up, down. It's like a ladder, a real fast ladder. Ooh, I love the instrumental cutout. <clears throat> Everything cuts out. Brilliant. That's just like a, a smart arrangement move. Again, all these things to just add interest and intrigue and, and keep keep the audience engaged. And not, not for like a YouTube analytics reason but literally just to make an engaging performance you know that high e again see that sounds very pure chest to me that high e mm. yes oh wait Up to an E6. Up above, obviously, you know, transitions into a, into a, a head voice there. 
but an E6, a, a, an E above soprano high C, super, super high. So we're getting very high belting and very high head voice here. No, that's a great example. See, that to me, that high G sounds, it's so well placed and it's well positioned and it's, it's, it's everything done exactly right. It just sounds like more of a mix. It sounds like a slightly, slightly lighter mechanism than pulling that chest voice all the way, all the way up into that high G. It sounds too, I don't want to say too easy or too healthy because theoretically both are possible, but it really, when someone, if someone sings a high G in pure chest voice, it really sounds like a, like they're really pushing their bodies to the limit. And for her, it sounds pretty, pretty easy, pretty manageable. So I'm just going to assume, um, very solid pure chest voice up pretty close to that high, probably at least E, but I'm, I'm going to guess the G and above is probably in some kind of mix. I would have to hear it in a different context to be sure. New chord progression, a new like a more uh, almost a more positive, powerful, uplifting. Hmm. Uh, maybe they shifted the to the relative major. Right here, right now. Hmm. Yeah, I think they shifted from they started in A flat minor, then they shifted to A minor, then I think they just moved to C major, which is the relative major of A minor. up to a high A, some, some kind of really gorgeous, pure, efficient mix, and then a quick, very agile riff down. That's something both of these ladies have. They have very agile, very controlled voices, very accurate riffing, um, which is just, it's, it's a lot of, it's vocal agility. Some of that's, you know, natural, some of that's trained, um, but it's, it's a wonderful thing to hear, to hear really accurate, fast riffing. I didn't have an appreciation for it always, but I really do now, and it, it, it's, it never ceases to impress me. <laughs> oh, that was, oh, Celine Dion. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, that was phenomenal. Two really excellent, wonderful singers. Great to hear them both for the first time. Um, so much you know, power belting in there, so much control over the high range, so much vocal agility in the sound, just very controlled, accurate riffing. Um, a lot of different vocal colors between where we started the piece and the climax where it was super high belting. Um, a lot of that distinction between high and low vocal fold closure that I talked a lot about. Really, really very enjoyable, very enjoyable. So I hope you guys learned something new about the voice. I hope you gained some appreciation and insight into the, what makes these two singers so talented. Um, if you did, if you gained value for real, if you gained value from this uh, video, um, 
check out my other videos. I guarantee you'll learn something new and basically all of them. There's always something new to talk about, whether it's artistic or, or vocally or whatever. Um, at least subscribe to the channel so you can, so you can uh, support me that way. But please do check out my Patreon. If, I, if you feel like I'm adding value to your life, your listening experience, you can add a little value to mine by supporting me via Patreon. It's the best possible way to support me, no question. Um, and otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first time reaction and analysis. I certainly did. And I will see you all for the next one. Cheers.